can start recording. Okay. Good morning, everyone. My name is Earlene Baggett Hayes. I am the assigned magistrate over the Blight Court hearings. What we're going to be doing is calling the cases one at a time. Um, generally, we'll hear from the city in terms of what their concerns are, and after which you will have full opportunity to respond. Okay, so uh, city, are you ready to call the first case? I am. It, I have an iPhone 3, a lady, glasses. Uh, Christina Brackens, is that me? It's yeah. a 13? Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, I was gonna say I, it's a 13. Um, but yes, Christina Brackens. Um, I had been here before and um, it was... Um, Ms. Bracken, can you hold on for just oh. one second? Let's make sure we have the property. Um, first of all, good morning. And what property are you here representing? 1265 University Drive. Okay, so let's hear from the city first and then you will have opportunity to respond, okay? Okay, yep. Thank you. Um, just one moment. How are you spelling your last name? Mine, Brackens, B-R-A-C-K-I-N-S. Thank you. Whenever you're ready, Ms. Cooper. Okay. I, it looks to me like we have a flight ticket for a rental inspection. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Okay. And it's the reason the ticket was written is because it was canceled on 513 of 22. Let me share my screen here. Okay, so it was canceled on 513 and then there was violations on Oh, just sharing. So then I, it seems that you made another inspection on 819. Is that correct? Yes, George Pfeiffer is supposed to be out there on the 18th just to make sure that everything is done. I've got most of it done. Um, I'm just, I'm having a really hard time finding an electrician um, because they are way out. But I have two people that are trying to get out there before the 19th but everything else will be done by then. So um, I, George is supposed to be out there on the 19th. Okay, it still says that you owe $50 for reinstatement. Well, yeah, he just issued that when he was out there. So I just haven't had a chance to pay it yet. I'm not even really sure why there was a $50 charge, but because he said I canceled the first appointment on 513, but I really didn't cancel it. I rescheduled it. Um, and it was several days even before he was supposed to be out there. It wasn't a last minute cancellation, but he said it counts as an uh, appointment. So he charged me $50. Okay. So I, I'd rather your money go towards your inspection and your compliance. And, and my recommendation is to dismiss this ticket. I would appreciate that. Oh, okay. So, um, well, if that's the recommendation of the city, I am not going to challenge that. This ticket is dismissed. Thank okay. You, the $50 the, ticket or the $100 no, the ticket? It's, it's, the $50 is a reinspection fee and the $100 is a flight ticket for inspection. Okay. So, so, so you're going to dismiss the 100 and I pay the 50 for the reinspection? Correct. I'd rather your money Perfect. go towards there. Thank you. I do appreciate that because it's going to be expensive to, to run these wires. So for the record, this case number is E220409 for $100. Yes. Thank you. Thank okay. You. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Make it a great day. Bye-bye now. Thank you. Bye-bye. Wow. Bear with me, Your Honor, because I have to do all my notes. Sure. Take your time. Okay. Um, 
Good morning, Carrie. I see you. Um, Bill Bosniak. Morning. Is that, is that the next case? Yeah. Um, uh, Ms. Cooper, can you stop the screen share for the last case? Yes. Thank you. Uh, good morning. I think that was Mr. Bodziak. It was. Good morning, Your Honor. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Good. Um, Cindy, let's hear what your concern is, please. I believe this is for 9109. Is that correct? Correct. 9109. I'm, sh I'm showing tall, tall grass and weeds. Is that correct? That's correct. Is there anything else or is that it? No, it's tall grass and weeds. There was a um, flight ticket also for a vacant that wasn't registered vacant. But William says he lives there, but he cannot. He, we talked yesterday. He came in and we talked yesterday and he said he cannot 100% homestead it because his fiance is on the deed and she 100% homestead another home. So he said this is his primary residence, but the neighbors claim there's no one over there. And the high grass and weeds ticket was because the grass in the backyard was as tall as me and I'm five foot. <laughs> okay, so uh, my understanding is that we're here today based on the tall grass and the um, and weeds. Correct. Right. Okay, Mr. Bazit, would you like to respond? Uh, yes, Your Honor. So, um, beginning of the season, uh, we've had some uh, difficulties getting a contractor out there because there's a, a, a only the only accessible way to get into the backyard is a gate, and uh, no one's been able to fit a deck mower. So, we've had some challenges getting it out there. Um, since the citation, um, it has been all cleaned up, all been taken care of, and we have found someone. Um, to mow the lawn on a biweekly basis, uh, front and backyard. So we're all set there. Um, my concern about this citation uh, is that um, we never received a, a notice uh, of any kind of action that the, the city wanted us to take. Um, we've been kind of working in the background to, to resolve things for, for a few weeks now, um, but uh, it is now taken care of. Um, again, we didn't receive any notice. The first correspondence I received from the city was a ticket. Um, and my understanding of the policy here in, in Pontiac is that um, we're supposed to receive a written notice of some sort um, and an opportunity to, to take care of the situation, um, which I don't believe we had. Any response, city? Absolutely. There's no notice needed for high grass of weeds because it's a public nuisance. So we have every right to cut your lawn without notice? Um, Your Honor, if I may? Yes. Um, page one of the um, code enforcement handbook is um, states that the city's policy is to encourage voluntary code compliance by providing residents uh, the opportunity <laughs> with sufficient notice and information to comply with the, the code. Um, you know, I'm grass is, is grass. I understand there were some, some weeds and, you know, it was getting a little overgrown back there. Um, but again, before an action taken that involves a monetary obligation, I believe the, the policy is pretty clear with the city that a notice should be, should be given in a time frame to, to resolve the issue. Um, so again, is it your position, Mr. Bazziak, that the, um, that the um, tall grass and weeds have been removed? That it has been removed. Yes, Your Honor. Because we abated it. We went and in. We are, and we are also now in contract um, with someone to take care of lawn care. On a regular basis? On a regular basis, yes, Your Honor. Okay. How much is the ticket in this matter? Your Honor, this ticket is $100. Plus we have um, we have an uh, abatement fee, too, that was imposed on this address. I'm sorry, Ms. Cooper, I can barely understand what you're saying. Did you say there's an abatement fee? Yes, there's an abatement fee because we had to have our contractors 
jump the fence and and weed whack the backyard because they couldn't get equipment past the fence. That was that's been our challenge too, but we finally found someone. Okay, what is that abatement fee? Excuse me. I'd like to back up a little bit. This is your house. You can't get in your backyard. No, having having lawn care with with a, a lawnmower get back there has been a challenge because the only thing that fits back there is decks. All the companies we've contracted that have come by and assessed the the yard couldn't get their decks back there, and they didn't want to push mow. So now we finally found someone with a push mower that can put it on their schedule for an every other week cut. And so that's been that's been taken care of. And this is your primary residence. That's correct. That is my primary address. My suggestion, Your Honor, uh, ticket number E221347 is tall grass and weeds for $100. I would like um, the owner to pay for that. Um, we also have a flight ticket E221. Three, four, eight, four, vacant, not registering with vacant. He claims he lives there, and I trust him that he does live there. Um, I would like to dismiss that ticket and impose the hundred dollar tall grass meeting. Your Honor, if I may. Yes. Um, Your Honor, I, I understand the city's position here on um, on the the blight ticket regarding the tall grass and weeds. Um, however, again, the policy is that um, citizens and, and occupants and homeowners are notified uh, that there is an issue and that action needs to be taken. Um, we were never received an opportunity uh, by admission of the city here uh, to handle this. So I, I believe it's um, unjust to just levy a fine without any kind of notice that an action needs to be taken at the property. Um, that's That's kind of my position here. So I, I'm going to ask the court to dismiss this ticket since it's been remedied and ongoing um, is taken care of. Okay, so it's just go ahead, go ahead, Ms. Cooper. Um, it's been remedied because my abatement contractor went in and cut the backyard. That's been remedied by that. We are required, we are not required to notify you when it becomes a public nuisance, when it's as tall as I am. That is a public nuisance and it creates vermin and it creates health and safety hazards to the neighborhood. Okay, I, I've actually heard enough here, but uh, let me just ask, is there a $100 abatement fee and a $100 ticket? No, it's a $100 all grass and weeds light court ticket. And we also have a cutting fee that will show up on his taxes for this property. I'm sorry, well, I could barely hear you, Ms. Cooper. It could show up. You know what, I have a, let me, let me turn this off. Sorry, Your Honor, we have a window air conditioning in my office, so I just turned it off. Well, hopefully it'll make a difference. I so hope you are, so. You are, you are indicating the abatement fee? I, I don't know the abatement fee at this point. I have to wait for the abatement contractors to, to submit it. Okay, so here's, here's what I'm going to do. Uh, Mr. Baziak, uh, please keep your grass cut. Uh, certainly, if someone else is coming in to cut for you, then they ought to be paid for doing it. Absolutely. In this regard, I'm going to dismiss the dismiss the ticket. And since there's no abatement fee available at this point, I'm not going to charge it. But please take care of that going forward. And thank you for calling in. Thank you, Your Honor. So are we dismissing the vacant flight ticket and then yes. in the high grass and weeds ticket? Yes, ma'am. So he has to pay the hundred for the high grass and weeds. No, he does not. Okay, you're dismissing that also? Yes. Okay, and you're dismissing the vacant fee too for $100. I thought you said you didn't know what the amount was, but yes, I'm dismissing everything. We'll move on. Thank you, Your Honor. Sure. 
Thank you. Ma we, I'm sorry, Ms. Cooper, we may have had, you can, you can sign out, Mr. Bosniak. Um, Ms. Cooper, we may have had um, a little bit of a lapse in our translation, but that's okay. We'll move on. I can take um, 1810814 phone number. Yes, I'm here. Hi, good morning. What is your name, sir? My name is Henry Longoria. Henry Longoria? Yes. Uh, good morning. What good property morning. are you calling on behalf of Mr. Longoria? Uh, 825 Scottwood Street, Pontiac, Michigan. My home residence. Okay, so let's hear from the city in terms of what their concern is, and then you will have an opportunity to respond, okay? Okay. City? Um, uh, hi, this is Tammy Cooper. I'm a code enforcement officer with the city of Pontiac, and I'm looking up your address right now. And I'm going to share this screen. It's accumulation of rubbish, sir. This photo was taken okay. July 26. Have you cleaned up any of this front yard debris? Oh, uh, yes, I have, and I don't even know what much because I really, I just have uh, a couple of rags of clothes on my porch. I don't know what uh, you guys are complaining about, and and the city itself came over a couple of days ago and left brought on my property when they were doing some kind of cable wire work or electrical wire work. So we have a, what I see is a barbecue and like a gas can and I have rags hanging and a what? traffic cone. Mr. Longoria, is this a picture of your, um, where you reside? I, let me see, I don't know if I can even see this. No, I, I, I can't see nothing on here. I don't know how to do this on this. Oh, you're on your phone? Okay. Okay. So do you live okay, in a beige, yeah. do you live in a beige house with a dark trim? Oh, uh, yes. And I did, I did remove, I did have a barbecue grill and a cone in my front yard and that's all, all, all removed. And I have another grill on the side. I got that removed. I had a couple of lawnmowers in the side of my house. I got that removed. So right now, to me, it should be all, all fine because it's not, didn't have much anyway. Maybe just the grill looked bad you know, on my front porch. Ms. Cooper, has the city taken a look at this recently? That's the most recent picture we have, Your Honor. And, and, and what is that dated for? 726. Uh, okay, so what's the main concern was? No, hold on a second, Mr. Mr. Longoria. When did you have all those items removed? Uh, let's see, two days ago, yesterday or the day before. Okay, I'm going to adjourn this matter for 30 days. Ms. Um, Cooper, can you... Um, schedule an inspection yes absolutely okay uh, mr longoria we're gonna we're gonna adjourn this matter for 30 days based on what you represented and that is that all these things have been removed within the last couple of days so the yes. city's going to go by and take a look and um okay. hopefully that will be the case okay okay now okay now uh is there a question uh i mean may may, may i ask a question about is there a complaint of and 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 anything from in front of my garage? It's just a um, accumulation. Or of was it just a yard? You just need you need to take care of anything that doesn't belong outside. You need to garage it or put it in your home. Okay, now listen now. Am I allowed to have two, maybe two, uh, two by sixes in my driveway, and maybe one stump in 
in my driveway. And the reason why I had that there is because I had trouble in the past with with uh, with damage to my garage door. So I so I put I got two two by sixes there and one stump there in the front to help for that way no one will smash into my garage door because I'm just tired of paying for my garage door to be fixed. Mr. Uh, Longoria, why don't you contact the city? You can call them on the phone. If you have specific questions about items that may be in front of your home I'm or, or where you live, I'm certain that they can um, address your questions. So contact the city. But right now, the city will go out and take a look to make certain that those things have been removed. And if they haven't been removed, then you certainly have an opportunity to take care of that as soon as possible. Okay. Okay. And they will let me know what what I need to be removed because I really just it's pretty much it's, to me it's cleaned up. I might have a couple of little things, but I mean what. Heck, okay, like but a, yeah, I, I just want you to know that the burden isn't totally on the city. You want the city to let you know. You get in contact with the city so you can make certain that your property is um, in compliance, okay? Okay, now now, what number is that? Just the Woodward number? My, what number is it, Ms. Cooper? My phone number is 248-758-2800. Two eight two six. Two eight two six. Correct. Okay, so I can call you in what, like in an hour or something? I'm already talking to you. <laughs> yeah, but we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and 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 move this um, meeting um, so that it doesn't interfere. We we have a number of people waiting, and we like to get to them as quickly as possible. So you can contact Miss um, Cooper or the city at a later time. Okay. We can make okay, it like, like, how long? like like in a couple hours or tomorrow or who, 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 who. on September 1st, you'll appear in Whiteport again. Okay, so you have a new court date that's um September 1st, but you can call Miss um, Cooper at your convenience, okay? Okay, thank you very call much for calling in. All right, thank you. Thank you. Make it a great day, Mr. Longoria. Thank you. Thank you very much. Attorney Carey, can we hear from you? Yes, dear. Yes, I think there's just one in for 759 St. Clair. If I look at the docket. Good morning, counsel. Good morning, Judge. How are you this morning? Fine, thank you. I'm sorry, 7591. St. Clair, it's at the bottom of the docket. I only showed the one for SK. It looks like it's tall grass. Oh, oh my. <laughs> I'm actually in eviction on this one. I actually just took a judgment on the on um the 31st, which was last Friday. So he has until mm -hmm. yep. Okay, because we sent that to our mowing contractor, so there will be um an abatement fee for his cutting plus a hundred dollar ticket and it's up to your honor to once and close this like your voice is again leaving on miss cooper you said there's an abatement fee and a, a tall grass ticket correct for hundred what is your recommendation miss cooper my recommendation for this i mean i know you're evicting them carrie but that's no and i actually have the grass yeah. long so, I know, and I don't think that we knew that it was so long. I think that um, this has been in this case has been an eviction because the courts are so far behind. Um, this I think I filed this early in the year, and I, what I mean is I mean like in March, and I just finally got a judgment um, that'll expire next week, so I can move on it. So I would ask that it be dismissed. But okay, I'm gonna order that the ticket be paid. Um... And that's it. Okay. okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay, Have a wonderful it, day, everybody. Make it a great day. Thank you, you Terry. Hi. You'd like to take a, a iPhone. There's no phone number. 
I'm asking to unmute. It looks like this is Frank Jones. I have a I have an iPhone 12. Uh, we'll take you, sir. Yes, absolutely, because no one else will respond. Okay, so the last four digits are six two three one. Correct. Yep. That's okay. Me. Good morning, yep. sir. What's your name, please? Name is Frank Jones. Calling on property six six three Leewood Down. Six six three. Yeah. Thank you. Um, let's hear from the city when they're ready. Okay. I have um, three blight tickets. Number E two zero. I'm sorry, E two zero one five three nine for a hundred dollars for inspection required. I have E two zero five two four five for three hundred dollars and E two two zero zero two two for rental inspection required for $500. And it looks like you paid for a registration for $300. And your initial inspection is set for 810. What took so long, sir, to get your registration? Um, I don't have a good excuse. I Well, I paid the 300. I thought that was all I needed to do. Um, it wasn't until I got the latest notice that I realized I needed to schedule a rental inspection, which I which I did right away. As you say, you have that scheduled for 810 next week. Uh, Ms. Cooper, did you say that there's a $500 ticket? What's that for? That is for inspection required. We've been um, asking him to register this property since um, April of 2020. So the, uh, since April Mr. 2020. Yes. The 2020 ticket is $100. There's another 2020 ticket for $300. And a 2022 ticket for $500. Well, the ticket, the $300 ticket. My recommendation, Your Honor. Honor well, let's 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 hear from, let's at least let Mr. Jones respond. Go ahead, okay. Mr. Jones. No, I'm just saying the $300 ticket I received in January 6th, and I paid that as you show. So I'm not, I'm not certain you're saying about going back to 2020. Oh, you paid that $100 too. My recommendation is to remove this $500 ticket so he can repair if needed his rental. Okay, I will remove the five hundred dollar ticket. Thank is you. Is there is there any other outstanding ticket then? No, there is not. Okay, um, Mr. Jones. Hopefully, you can utilize um, additional monies in the event that there are some issues with any of the inspections or anything. So I'm going to remove the five hundred dollar ticket. Make it a great day. Thank you. Appreciate. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Jones. You can hang up. All right. Thank you. I'm going to take an iPad 7. Says. I think we, we pulled that iPhone earlier. Were they able to connect? The iPhone never connected. I asked. The iPhone them never connected. Do. Okay. Let's go to the iPad then. At least they know we haven't forgotten them. Ask to unmute. Good morning. Good morning. How are Good you? Good morning. What's your name, please? My name is Joy Raman. I'm sorry, the last name? It's Raman, R A M A N. What okay. address are you here for? Which property are you calling regarding? I'm calling about 755 Melrose. Ms. Cooper, I'm showing a 35 Warner. I'm showing 35 Warner too, Mr. Raymond. The letter I received says 755 Melrose. 
Okay, I have Melrose and then two five more. Bear with me, Your Honor. Sure. Okay, we have both. I don't know why I didn't pick up the um, Melrose. Uh, Mr. Raymond, let's address the 35 Warner first. It was for tall grass. We sent it to our mowing contractor and your ticket, your blight ticket was $100. Okay, uh, I did not receive any letter on Warner and I did not, he, he, so I'm not even aware of that, but Warner has been taken care of is all I can say because I have a regular landscaper who does all my properties. Uh, so along with 755 Melrose, 35 Warner has been taken care of. I'm gonna share my screen with this is uh, this property at 35 Warner for tall grass before mowing and after mowing. So we had to abate this, sir, because it's longer than eight inches. That's what our ordinance says. So I don't know if you have a, someone regularly cutting this or not. Yes. So he said he cut it. I'm sorry. He said he cut it. Okay, we cut it. Well. It has I'm not like like I said. I was not, you know, like the previous gentleman said. I was not notified with a letter or an abatement, and I don't want to get surprised with an abatement fee when I have not had the opportunity to even address it on my own. Mr. Raymond, but I just with so, us. but hold on, uh, Miss Miss Cooper. Let's allow him to finish, okay? Please. Yeah. So this is the first time I'm hearing about it because I came into this meeting ready to talk about 755 Melrose, which is the letter that I received along with a letter that talks about a $100 blight fee. So let's talk uh, about Melrose. Okay. Okay, um, so yeah, so Melrose, um, the, the infraction date was 617. And uh, I received a letter, um, usually, you know, the letters come very quickly, but because of Juneteenth, uh, the letters supposedly went out later. So I got the letter, I believe um, on the 23rd of June, giving me about three or four days to uh, react to that letter, which I, which I did. Um, and uh, the inspection was on the 27th. Um, I, I came to find out from my landscaper that, that his machine broke down on Sunday that, and he wasn't able to do it. He said he would try to get somebody else to do it. Um, and uh, eventually Eventually, he took care of it himself after getting his machine fixed on Monday. Um, so I was a day late in getting that addressed. And I did inform the city about it, um, saying that I was a day late. Uh, but I wanted to, I just want to inform all of you that it has been taken care of on that day and, and it has been taken care of subsequently as well. Right. Mr. Raymond, um... I'm sorry, go ahead, Your Honor. No, go ahead, Ms. Cooper. Um, we have, um, oops. Is there a recommendation, Ms. Cooper? Yes, one moment.
my recommendation is that he needs to pay for this ticket for $100 because we did abate it. I also informed the city about canceling the abatement because like I told you, uh, I, I took care of it the next day. I don't know if the abatement was canceled or, or if, they, uh, if, if, they, if your contractors did anything there, but I certainly don't want them to come cut my grass and, and charge me a $235 fee, especially when I have that property under contract. <laughs> So, well, um, Ms. Cooper, are you indicating that the uh, that the city took care of the property and cut it? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. I don't, I, they, 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 they did not, Your Honor, because my, my landscaper was there about a week ago, and he said, you know, it, it didn't, it doesn't look cut, so he cut it again. So I, I don't have any invoice from the abatement office. Um, and I, uh, you know, and, and if an abatement has been ordered, I think I have a right to know that. So then I'm not going to charge for the um, abatement. I am going to charge for the ticket, sir. So you'll pay the $100 ticket. But I took care of the, I took care of the property a day after. Uh, I understand, I understand, sir, but there was a $100 ticket uh, issue. I hear you saying that the abatement apparently wasn't adequate and that you had it recut, but there's certainly more expense involved in the abatement. So your fine is $100. We're gonna to go to the next case and you have a great day, sir. Okay. Thank and, you. And so what about the, should I reappear for 35 Warner or what do I have to do? I'm certain that the city will contact you should they need for you to reappear. Your Honor, okay, thank can you. you hear that case today? That is also a hundred dollars for tall grass and wheat. Well, I know. Well, Mr. Um, Ramon is yes. complaining that he wasn't aware of it. I don't know if is there any further work that any further investigation that you need in order to appear on behalf of that ticket. Because we can, if you're saying you didn't receive notice, we can make sure you get proper notice. No, he got notice. No, I did not get notice on 35 more. Yard. Okay, let's give him proper notice and we'll come back on another day. Okay, thank you. September sure, 1st for Warner, please. That's for 35 Warner, yes. That's correct. We'll give him proper noticing and come back. Now, there's a um, Princeton out there. I think it's 33. 33 East Princeton, R. McCluskey. Hello, McCluskey is my client. Hi, how are you? Okay. I'm a, I'm Erling Baggett Hayes, and your name is? Anthony Lupkin. I don't know if he even owns those properties. I don't know if he's a tenant or he's on land contract, but anyway, go ahead. You, what were your questions? What is your name, sir? Anthony Lupkin. And which property are you representing? Uh, Princeton. But do you have the address? 30, 33 East. Is that 33? Okay, it is the 33 Princeton. Okay. Let's hear from the city and you can respond when the city lets you know what the concern is, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Whenever you're ready, Ms. Cooper. Okay, getting there. Yes. One of the few SP companies with no. 33 East Princeton. I would for $100 for abandoned vehicles. $100 for vehicle storage. Really good thing. Is being picked up the way I and that's it. Did you say two one hundred dollar well, tickets? I'm looking at. Is that what you said, Miss Miss Cooper? That's correct. Okay. Okay. Well, I don't, I don't know if you can give them a little mercy or a little more adjournment time, but apparently they're getting the grass growing back again in the front. 
and the truck that's in the problem is being taken back to the bank in about 10 days. So I don't think there's gonna be a problem anymore. You can have a little mercy or adjourn this long enough for him to know that's been done. That would certainly help. And also the properties are in the name of some, they're not deeded to him. They're either on land contract or they're landlords or something. If he was running a business and having cars come in and out of this property, is that going to stop? Yeah, everything's shutting down. He's not, he's not in good shape. Because this is a residential area. He knows that, yeah. Is there a recommendation, City? My recommendation is to, let's see. I have, I'm looking at the file here for the flight ticket. Oh, yeah. If you can go by in a couple in a couple of weeks, confirm what I'm saying and adjourn it for the rest of the month, that'd be great. E two one two three nine zero is operating a business and that was for a hundred dollars. I would recommend to dismiss that one. E two one two. 585 is the same as vehicle. That's for hundred dollars. I would recommend to impose that ticket on that. Yeah. Yeah, I am going to um, follow that recommendation and impose the one hundred dollar ticket um, going forward. Is there anything else? Everything else should have been done. Uh, pardon me? Was everything else dismissed? I have E220048 for vehicle storage for $100. And my recommendation yeah, that's... is to impose that fee too. Okay, I'm going to dismiss that ticket. Okay. So he needs to pay the um, $100 for the abandoned vehicles. Can you, can you um, send a notification to him and me? What is your procedure, um, Ms. Cooper? This is your notification, sir. Yeah, I, I, I was afraid she was going to say that. Hopefully, you're making making note of it, as Ms. Cooper certainly is as well. Well, it'd be nice to have some record of this. If you could have something mailed or something. You can email me, sir, and I can email you in the email. Pardon me. Email me at T Cooper. Hold on a second. I need your number. Hold on. I have to. I have to write down everything. So I have to know. Hold on. All right. Your your name is. My name is Tammy Cooper. Tandy Cooper, City of Tammy. Pontiac. Tammy Cooper. Pontiac. It's T like Tom Cooper, C O O P E R at Pontiac. Tammy Cooper. At Pontiac.mi.us. I need to slow on a second. Flight. And your phone number there is what? My phone number is 248. 758 2824. 2824? Correct. So if you email yes. me and request any information, I'll be glad to. T. Cooper, T. Cooper at Pontiac. Dot MI. Dot US. The zoning department or blight or whatever. And what tickets do you have? Dismissed. Okay. So what tickets do we have? Be staying on. I have ticket number E two one two three nine zero for a hundred dollars that you're on a dismiss. That's been dismissed. We have E two one two five eight one two. Okay, what's the next one? P212585 is to be paid for the magistrate. 585? 
Correct. $100. Let's pay a hundred. That's the abandoned vehicle. Yeah. And then we have E2200 for $100 that you kind of dismiss. E212? E22048. Four eight. And that's dismissed. How much is that for two hundred? One hundred. So that was a hundred. The other one was two hundred? No, they're all a hundred, sir. Okay. There was no more than that? No, sir. Okay. Two two oh four eight was dismissed. And two one two three nine oh was dismissed. Well, what was the was what was the two one two, three or nine oh four? Is that the business? Or is it four eight the business? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, what is your question, sir? What was the charge on four eight? Business on residential? That's for vehicle storage. A Storage. Storage. And the other one was business on, on residential. Okay, cool. You've been very helpful. All right, well, Mr. Sir, Shubkin, thank you very much have, for calling sir. in. If you have further thank questions, you, please contact the city. I think you have the number there, okay? Uh, she gave me a number of 758-2824. Thank you. No, no, that's not my number, sir. Seven five eight two eight two four. That's my no. It's seven five eight. It's I'm sorry, two four eight seven five eight two eight two six. Two six now, okay. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, make it a great date, sir. Thank you. I'm seeing um, Jermaine Branner. That's um, my code enforcement officer. Oh, okay. Hi, uh, Mr. Branner. He stepped out for a moment. Is there anyone else? Branner is saying hello to you. Unmute yourself, sir. There you go. Uh, good morning. There we go. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. How are you today? I'm doing amazing. How about yourself? I'm doing amazing. Thank you. Good. So this will be the last Zoom meeting, Your Honor. Everything else will be in person. Oh, really? Oh, okay. When was that announcement made? You know what? We discussed it, and all of a sudden, my... um. My 818 ticket said in person on the corner of it. It doesn't have any Zoom numbers. I, I'm thinking that I'm going to have to ask IT if they changed it. Okay, because I, I probably the same thing is true for Ms. Lofton. Since we have these scheduled already, it's, we're going to have to go back and check our schedules to make okay. sure. Yeah, hopefully there are no conflicts. Ugh. I hope so. It's a little bit of a short notice. <laughs> yeah, I just I I just noticed it myself yesterday. And I I was talking to Vern about it and he said, really? And I said, Yeah. I said, I didn't change it. Did you change it? He goes, No. So okay. I'm a desk IT. Okay. I do think it's a lot more convenient for our, our citizens. Yeah, I believe so too. Via Zoom, I think. What do you think? I do. I love Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Well, who who's the who's the determining who makes the final determination? Is it is or it Vern, is it you? Zoom. Is it Vern? Is it Mr. Gustafson? Or who is it? This the mayor or uh, um, <laughs> we have um we have input from everybody. Are we still recording? Perhaps we should not be. Oh, yes, yes. Let me end recording. Stop.
Okay, it is now 10 after 10. We don't have anyone else in the waiting room for today's Zoom hearing. So we will be in appropriate contact with those individuals who did not appear. This concludes the Zoom hearings for today, August 4th, 2022. Thank you, Honor. You're welcome.